Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our collective worship for today. Um, I thank you for joining us. If you're at home, hope you've had a good day and uh, enjoyed your remote learning so far today. Uh, I know uh, the teachers have seen some lovely work, so that's been great. Uh, so keep on, on handing that work in, whether you're in school or at home, that's brilliant. So our collective worship for today it, um, is sort of following on from a theme that we had the other day. But before we get started, um, as always, I'll share the screen. And we'll start with our, uh, as we always do, we're lighting the three candles. So we light these candles in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So uh, yesterday in our collective worship, we um, we were thinking about that that word unforgiveness, which we put in. And and today we're going to be thinking about saying sorry um, and also thinking about the importance of saying sorry and realize that when you've genuinely made a mistake, that we can have a fresh start. So this time we'll be thinking more about looking for forgiveness rather than um, rather than uh, giving someone some forgiveness on letting go of something. And we're gonna be thinking about how important it is to say sorry and ask for forgiveness when we've done something wrong. And more importantly, it's the actions that we have after we've said sorry that mean, um, mean that we're truly sorry. So we're gonna be thinking about that today. But before we do, um, we'll be thinking about uh, how many of you like having adventures um, and Sometimes when I'm out driving with my children, we take shortcuts. They kind of like the fact that we go off on adventures because we don't know where we're going to go. Um, and sometimes when I go out on my bike, um, I'll go up roads that I wouldn't know to see where it, where it takes me. And it takes you on a little bit of an adventure. Um, but we're going to be thinking about a different type of adventure. And we're going to be thinking about somebody who, who really had quite a big adventure. Um, but more importantly, he could have avoided the adventure totally if he had just um, sort of done what he would ask to do. Um, so along the way in his journey, in his adventure, he made a few big mistakes um, and had to face up to it and ask for forgiveness right at the end to try and make things and get things, uh, make things a bit better. So that's what we'll be thinking about today. And the story we'd be thinking of it involves this man. And this man is called Jonah. Now, Jonah was um, what you would call a prophet. And he was someone who, who listened to what God had said and he would be spoken to by God and he would then follow it and follow what he's told them. Now, Jonah obviously lived well over 2000 years ago, so a long, long, long time ago. Um, and he would be spoken to by God and God would instruct him of what to do. Um, and in this case, what God had instructed him to do is he said, I would like you to go to the city of Nineveh. And there's the city of Nineveh. And he says, the people there have stopped listening to me. They seem to be doing cruel things and unkind things to each other. Um, and unless they change their ways, God said that he was going to destroy the city. Now, what he said was, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. And I want you to warn them that if they don't change their ways, that I will destroy the city. Now, at this point in his head, Noah was thinking to uh, Jonah was thinking to himself, there is no way I'm going to Nineveh. He goes, those people in Nineveh are just a nightmare. I don't like them and I couldn't care less what happens to them. If he wanted to destroy them. That's pretty good to me. So instead of going to the city of Nineveh and passing on the words that God had asked, Jonah decided to do something different. He decided to go in the opposite direction. He decided to run away from what God had said. And he went to the harbour in Joppa, where he found a boat that was going to Spain, um, right on the opposite direction to where he should have been going. So he paid his fare, he got on the boat, and then off they set sail. And soon, it wasn't long before Jonah was asleep on the boat. Now, um, what happened then was he woke up one, one, uh, in the evening with a jolt because the captain was standing by him, telling him that they were in a terrible storm. The waves were high and they were crashing over the sides of the boat. The wind was blowing the boat in all directions. And he said, this is a really bad storm. Um, 
And so the captain, because he knew that Jonah was a prophet of God, he said, I really need you to pray to God to try and save us. But the thing was, Jonah knew what was happening. The storm is all my fault, he thought. The God I serve made the sea and he controls the wind and the waves. If you want this storm to stop, he told the captain, you're going to have to throw me overboard. Now, obviously, the sailors and, and the captain didn't really want to do that. They didn't want to harm Jonah. So what they tried to do was put the oars in the side and they tried to row themselves out of danger. However, the more they rowed, the more the storm raged on and the waves got higher and higher. And finally, after all of that, the sailors and the captain had to do what they didn't want to, which was throw Jonah over the side of the ship. And down, 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 he sank into the sea. Uh, they prayed to God that they would not hold it against him for killing Jonah. Now, as Jonah plunged into the sea, down he went. The storm stopped. And God did not want Jonah to drown. He still had a job to do. So as he was splashing around in the waves, a great big fish swam up and swallowed Jonah whole. Now, once Jonah was inside the belly of uh, the fish's belly, he realised he'd made a stupid, he'd how it made a stupid mistake and how silly he had been to think that he could run away from God. If only I'd gone to Nineveh when God asked, it, asked me, he said, I wouldn't be in this mess at all. Uh, so if he hadn't done that, he wouldn't have got on the boat. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have got into the storm and I certainly wouldn't be sat in a smelly fish's tummy praying to God. So knowing that he'd messed up big time, Jonah said, uh, said to God that he was sorry. And then three days later, the fish spat him out on the beach. Now, Jonah at this point knew what he had to do and he had to do what God had asked. And he set off to the journey to, on a journey to the city of Nineveh. And once he arrived, he started talking to the people and telling them about what God had, had said. And he told them that they had been cruel and unkind and not very nice to each other. And he warned them that if he didn't change their ways, God would destroy the city. And because Jonah was a, a prophet of God, they listened to him. And then even the king of Nineveh realised that Jonah was speaking the truth. And he called for all of the people of Nineveh to repent and say sorry for what they have done. And they all did. They all said sorry to God. And to show how sorry they were, they took off all their posh clothes and all of the things that, that, that all the material possessions that they had got around them. And they went back to wearing plain old clothes. And then they prayed to God, asking for him to forgive them. And because God was God was sure that they that they were genuinely sorry and their actions had shown that they were sorry. He then told Jonah to go and tell them that he would no longer tell that he would no longer destroy the city. However, instead of being pleased about it, Jonah got the right hump. He was really, really miffed at the fact that um, that God had said this. And he went outside and sat outside of the city under a vine leaf. There's the vine leaf there. Uh, so he could shade from the hot sun. I knew God would forgive them, he said to himself. I wanted him to destroy the people of Nineveh. They deserved it. They had been really mean. So to teach Jonah a lesson and something really important, God sent a worm and the worm started eating through the vine and soon the vine died. Then Jonah was even more upset because now he didn't have any shade and, and it was super hot. And it was then that God spoke to him. Jonah, he said, you're annoyed because the plant has died, even though you did nothing to look after it or make it grow. In the city of Nineveh, Nineveh there are over 120,000 people and each one of them I love and care for. So surely it's right that I didn't destroy them, but to forgive them when they're truly sorry for the things that they have done. And with that, 
Jonah took that advice on board and could understand what it means to be forgiven. And again, asked Jesus to forgive him for being so mean, which Jesus did. And from that day on, Jonah always listened to what God had asked and tried to do the right thing. Now, when we think about it, uh, obviously, sometimes it's, it's hard for us to, as we talked about yesterday, uh, forgiving others for doing mean things to us. Sometimes it's always hard uh, to say sorry, and it's never really, never easy. So I want to just time for reflection for a moment, because saying sorry sometimes isn't easy for us to do. But what I want you to do whilst you, you're sat reflecting for a moment is think about is that if there's anyone that you think you need to say sorry to. Maybe you need to forgive someone who has hurt you in some way. And just like yesterday, wouldn't it be good to sort it all out and have a fresh start? So take that on board when it comes to any fallings out that you maybe, maybe you're having, um, thinking about whether or not you've done something wrong or somebody else has, and how important it is that we say sorry and try and explain the way that we've behaved. And whilst you're thinking about that and your eyes are closed, if you'd like to place your hands together, you could join us in a prayer. Dear God, please show us how to be honest with ourselves and honest uh, ourselves, others and you. Help us to realise that if we are truly sorry for what we have done, the mistakes we make can be forgiven and we can have a fresh start. Amen. So I'll just stop sharing for a second. So, yeah, so that, that, that was I just wanted to touch on that today, really, um, with regards to the fact that yesterday we talked about um, forgiving others, but also Today, I wanted to focus on the fact that sometimes we need to say sorry and ask for forgiveness ourselves. And although it's not easy, um, it's really important that it's something that we can do uh, and make the most of. OK, well, thank you very much for our collective worship today. I will be back again tomorrow. Um, and then before we know it, it will be Friday and it will be celebration and praise. So I'm looking forward to seeing who's up for celebration and, and praise for next uh, for this Friday's assembly. So keep up the good work, keep handing it all in um, and keep trying your hardest because it could be your name up on the screen uh, this Friday. So take care and I shall see you all on Friday or tomorrow, actually, for our next collective worship. OK, bye, everyone.